Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, USA Global TV watchers and listeners, as well as our watchers and listeners from E360 TV, Roco Worldwide, and Amazon Fire. You are joining me today on our wonderful show here called Talking Heads, and my name is Mariska Dupria. I am so excited to be with you guys today because we are going to have a wonderful segment looking at leadership and feedback. Now, I don't know about you guys, but typically feedback can be one of those very tricky situations for most of us. So I thought it would be a good day for us to have a bit of a look and see what the art of giving and receiving feedback might look like for us and why it's important. So without further ado, shall we jump into our wonderful segment then today? And we already have somebody watching as well. Yay! From Atlanta. Hey, I am so happy to have you here. This is so, so good to already see people being interested in this topic. So what exactly is this feedback thing and why is it important? Well, to start, start off with, when we think about feedback, for most of us, whether you are in leadership or whether you are not in leadership, typically the first thing that comes to mind is, damn, I don't want it. Now that is a normal response and it is also one of the things that we need to move our mindset a little bit regarding because when we get feedback we actually get data so the way that i like to think about the feedback is data gathering now i don't know about you but when i think about it as data gather- gathering it really feels a lot less threatening because what can data do for me it gives me information and what can i do with information well with information i can actually decide what it is that i need to change or which direction i need to go into or what operations i may need to make in order for me to go in the direction that i desire to go into So when we think about feedback as a leader, the other thing that also comes up is that we will give feedback typically when, well, something goes wrong. And yes, we do need to give feedback around those areas to see how we can fix the problem or alter the situation. And is this really the only place where feedback would be helpful? Remembering that feedback is data and it helps us to actually determine what area we want to go into. So if we think about an experiment, right, 
say we have two things that we throw together and, well, maybe it explodes. Now, we know the quantities in which we place them into the flask and we saw an expo explosion of a certain magnitude. Now, what we can do is we now have data. We know that with these quantities, we get an explosion. So if we think about something like hydrogen, for instance, if we have very low quantities of H2, and in general, we have loads and loads and loads of normal E around it, nothing really happens to it. It is not in a state where it will do anything. But if the quantities are the right, right amounts, what happens is we get an explosion. So we might want to reduce one quantity and see what happens then. And we continue our experiment. So first time it exploded, second time, maybe it still explodes, but it's, it, the explosion is reduced. So we have new data until we get to a point where it doesn't happen. Now we have new data. Now, this whole process gives us a whole bunch of ways that it didn't work and possibly a couple of ways that it did work. Now, if we were to take that same principle and utilize it on human beings, of course, there's a whole bunch of different varieties of things that might happen in situations. And we are human beings, so we have free will and we may or may not comply to whatever the hypothesis might be for that specific situation. So when we get data, right, we need to test them and see whether that is actually the only indication point that we have. And with feedback, that's really what we are doing. Now, if I only give a person data when something goes wrong, they start to know what not to do. What I want you to think about is, do they understand what it is that they need to do? Technically the opposite, yes. And would that help them to thrive? Would that help them to really exceed expectations? Possibly not. So we not only need feedback when something goes wrong to get to fix it. We also need feedback when stuff doesn't go wrong or when we did things really, really well. Because also within this space, it gives us data. It tells us that, well, if the thing goes really well and I did these sort of behaviors, I can do more of that in order for me to move into that direction and keep things on track. And that is the thing that I want us today to really think about, is how is it that we give feedback in a way that even when we give feedback for things that went wrong, we focus on the area where we want it to go towards. As human beings, normally for most of us, it's really easy to know the things that we don't want in life. So if I were to ask you a question where I say, well, what would you like um, your next job to be like? And you will most probably start to list all the things that you don't want in that job. I don't want to do a lot of paperwork. I don't want to work with these type of people. I don't, I don't, I don't. So we are very clear on the, I don't want this. We are not always as clear as on the, I do want that. And that is as a leader, something that we need to create clarity on, not only for ourselves, but also, for our team. 
Because when we know what it is that we are moving towards, the thing we do want, it makes it a lot easier to move towards that thing versus the thing we don't want. And then, well, what is then the thing that we do want? The opposite of it? I don't know. It might be. It might not. So having that clarity for ourselves as the leader makes it a lot easier when it comes to feedback because then when we provide feedback to our team member around whatever the situation is that did or didn't go to plan, we can do it through the lens of what we're actually looking for. So when we think about feedback, think about, well, what is it that we are looking for? And then also, what is it that this person did that went into that direction or maybe didn't do that we need to change a little in order to go into that direction? Now, when you think about it, if I have clarity on where I'm going and the types of behaviors that would lead me there, it is a lot easier to then tell the person, well, you know what, this thing didn't quite happen the way that we thought it might. And if we are to do this behavior, we know that we will go into the direction that we actually want. So how might we change it? And it becomes a conversation around how to move into the behavior or the direction which we actually want to move into versus a, well, trying to fix a problem that may or may not be able to be fixed or blaming each other because, well, we know how that also comes up within any feedback space. So having that clarity gives us a good ground on which to start. And that is vital for us as leaders, as well as for those in our team. Because now we're working from the same base and it becomes a lot easier to give feedback. Because now I can also focus on the data that I'm providing this person versus possibly attacking the person. Because we also know that within a feedback space, we want to create psychological safety. And to create psychological safety, I need to be able to really see and hear the other person. And when I don't have clarity on where we're moving towards, it becomes really difficult for me to see the person, the human being, on the other side of whatever the feedback is that I need to provide. And all sorts of things start to happen for us in that space when that happens. So it might be that we get scared and we don't want to give them the feedback. We might feel that if we give them the feedback, they'll get upset. Whatever it is that we make up for ourselves, it hinders us from actually providing useful data in order for them to alter or change or look at the behavior that took them into a space that wasn't as desired as the one that we actually want. It's also for us a lot easier when we are clear as to what the behavior is that we are looking for. Because then the other person has clarity on actually what they need to do. So I know Bre Brene Brown has a saying of clarity is kindness. And it applies in feedback as well. The clearer we can be on the behaviors 
around what the team is or isn't doing or the specific thing that went wrong or went right, the easier it is to then not do that thing or continue doing that thing. And of course, I know for all of us, this is a work in progress. So typically, because most of us do not like feedback and we think of it as something other than data, we have a tendency to avoid it. Of course, because we avoid it, we never really get good at having those conversations. So one of the other elements that we, we want to give feedback to think about is around how do we do this in a way that would be generative. Now, when you think about giving feedback to somebody else in a generative way, what emotions do you feel in that space? How do you feel that would be to have a generative feedback conversation where you can provide them with the data that they require to alter or change the behaviors into a space where they have clarity what they need to do to do better. Even as I am speaking these words, how does that make you feel when you think about having a generative feedback conversation? For me, personally, it feels liberating. I would love to have a generative feedback conversation because then I can grow. I know I can learn from it. And I can change it. I need to change my process. I need to look at it in a different way. And maybe add other strengths into spaces that I haven't even considered adding. And that is the difference between having generative conversations when we have these feedback conversations versus non-generative conversations where we blame each other or we, we try to have that conversation with the person, but it doesn't quite come out of our mouth the way that we want it, or maybe it's not received in the wonderful way that it could be received either. And the other element when we think about being a leader and feedback, is also to be open to feedback. Now, yes, this might suck a little bit, especially initially, because we're not used to it. I had a personal experience not so long ago, actually the beginning of this year, when I, I personally received some feedback and it felt quite harsh. Honestly, I was a little bit upset at the beginning, uh, possibly a little bit more than a little bit upset, seeing as I ruminated about the feedback for a couple of days. And then came to the conclusion that, well, I can take this feedback as this person sucks and I never do anything wrong, or I can take it as data and go, okay, great. I received this feedback. It didn't feel so good. And I want to change in order to create something that actually feels generative for me. And how do I go about doing that? And that's what I did. I figured out what would feel generative for me, what's the direction that I wanted to move into, and then I took my data points and I started to experiment. I started to look at the feedback that I got and how that might be applicable and how I might change it, how I could experiment with it in different ways in order for me to get different results. Because we have our age-old little equation around the situation plus our reaction equals some or other outcome. And I can always change my reaction. 
and might not always be able to change the situation. And because I changed my reaction, I have an influence on the outcome I will get. I am one of the things that's being poured into the flask. And I can make sure that it is not an explosion, but actually something that's generative. And as leaders, being able to do that for ourselves makes it a lot easier then to also help the rest of the team to do the, do it for themselves. So thinking about the way that we receive feedback, even when it stings, because remember, we, we cannot control the way that the other person gives the feedback to us. We can, however, be curious. And we can ask questions. And we can, if they weren't as clear about exactly what it was or specific about an exact point in time or a specific situation or even a specific behavior, we can ask so that we can get clarity and we can get the information that we need in order to have the data that we need in order to then change the thing that we need to change. And of course, with feedback, it is around seeing what the intention is. So if I've decided I'm going into a specific direction and the feedback that I get does not necessarily support the little direction in which I'm moving, well, I can take it with a pinch of salt. It's always my decision whether I want to act on the feedback or not. Does it serve the purpose of where I am heading or not? I mean, if for whatever reason I want to be a horrible person about it and the direction in which I'm moving is to be a horrible person, well, then it suits. But if I don't want to be and I want to be well-liked or honourable or whatever the thing is that I am working towards, and my feedback that I get tells me that, well, the way I showed up, maybe I looked like a dick just a bit. Then I can adjust it and I can make sure that I change the way that I show up and become the person that I want to become because it serves the purpose. So understanding that end goal and what it is actually that we are working towards makes a big, big difference in how we both receive and give our feedback. So as you go on your day and influence others, lead others, be with your team and your family because you are a leader in multiple spaces in your life, Think about how you can gather the data that would help you become the person that you want to be and serve the group in a way that will help them to actually have generative conversations where they move in the direction that you all decided on moving into. And that is our very fast masterclass on the art of giving and receiving feedback. And before we end our show today, remember we are also part working and driving to add some subscribers. So we want to reach 100,000 subscribers on both our YouTube channels by September the 15th. If you have not joined either of our YouTube channels yet, please do so today and subscribe. It will give you the opportunity to enjoy loads more shows like this one, Talking Heads, as well as a variety of our other shows, and you will be in the know. And of course, build on your knowledge for all the things of how to be human. And 
if you would like to get hold of me, you can do so via my email, which is mariska at journey to the number two, discover.com. Or alternatively, you can also reach me via LinkedIn. And I work with leaders that is up and coming. So if you are stepping into leadership for the very first time, or you are an existing leader and working with your team, maybe of people that execute or a leader of leaders, that's the people that I work with. And of course, as I said, we are all leaders in different spaces in life. If you have any questions or thoughts, please let me know. I would love to hear how you are handling feedback in generative ways in your space. Until next time, bye-bye. Five little known secrets for dementia caregivers with Tracy Cram Perkins. Hi there, I am Tracy Cram Perkins, the host of the Dementia Home Care Show here on USA Global TV and Radio. I am also the author of the book of the same name. And you'll see this QR code. This is for an extended version of the same talk. So if you wanna see the full hour long version, feel free to scan the code and go to that website. Stick with me, we'll talk about five little known secrets to make it a little easier to do dementia caregiving. What you're seeing on the left-hand side is a healthy aged brain, age 55 and above. The one you're seeing on the right is an Alzheimer's disease brain. It is in moderate disease. It is shrinking. It has holes in it. The memories that were in those holes no longer exist. When you're learning something, let's say in kindergarten, you learn how to tie your shoelace. Well, then by the time you're in second grade, your brain remembers that information from tying the shoelace and applies it so you can learn more quickly how to tie more complex knots. So the brain is hardwired to do this for us. So it helps us learn faster so it doesn't take as long to acquire knowledge. The brain is looking for the information and they pick the closest to wherever that hole is. Let's look at some tips that we can use to help do that. These are five simple tools you can use as a dementia caregiver to help your loved one. The whiteboard is a useful tool in recording the day's activities and the answers to repetitive questions. The calendar clock is a very useful tool to orient your loved one on the day, the date, and the time and remind them of upcoming appointments. The communication cards are a great tool to bridge the gap when they can no longer tell you what's wrong. And then there's the pill minder for when your loved one is still able to take pills but needs prompting. The final tool I want to share with you is the memory book. It tells your loved one's story. It's a great tool for distraction, redirection, also as a conversation starter and telling you where they are in their story so you know how to answer their questions. Music is probably the most powerful tool in your toolbox after laughter. Music is a way to maintain connection. It sticks with your brain longer than any other thing, including reading. When you're having an issue with somebody, you can play their favorite music if you move them to another room, something that makes them happy. Or you can start singing songs together from their childhood. These are some of my favorite books for caregivers. My show airs on the third Tuesday of every month, and you can view past episodes on YouTube. Thank you, everyone. This program has been brought to you in part by Tracy Cram Perkins. Connect with her and order her book at TracyCramPerkins.com. For more information about Alzheimer's disease, support resources, and how you can help, contact the Alzheimer's Association at 1-800-272-3900 or visit their website at www.alz.org. They offer 24-7 helpline support and a wealth of information to assist you and your loved ones. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence, changing lives. And now, proudly presenting The Polished Professional.
on a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose, delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, mastery and dining etiquette. Building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance and excellence aren't just taught, they are instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you. Meet Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, President, Founder, and Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio. She is a certified life, career, and executive coach. Dr. Jacqueline is the Amazon number one best-selling author of Behind the Green Screen and Adversity to Awesome. As the listening mentor, she teaches children and their families how to listen at an elevated level through the book series titled The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor. The Creative Hearts Awakening book series features heart-centric creatives who share their awakening journey. Through the Power of Listening educational course platform, people can get certified as elevated listeners on USA Global TV and radio. Learn how to center yourself and align with nature through the power of nature, plants, and shrines. The Journey of Chakra Psychology course will educate you on the chakras and their meaning. The Intuition of the Heart course will help you understand how to trust your intuition, learn how to face the shadows of self, and understand the impact of following trends and materialism. Set boundaries and ask for permission to help establish better relationships, deeper connections, and more authentic conversations. Take your communication expertise to a higher level with the course for curious humans. After all, we are not robots. Looking to start your own podcast platform? Get everything you need in the Podcaster Pro Package with Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. How can music, breath, and your voice set you free? Find out with the Power of Listening courses. Dr. Jacqueline is a certified meditation teacher, yoga instructor, and Juice Plus distributor. She will help you create a plan for your healthy lifestyle. As an expert in the art of interviewing with over 3,000 hosted and or produced live broadcasts, Dr. Kerbeck helps her clients stand out as global broadcasters. Dr. Kerbeck's books are available on Amazon. Start your listening journey by reading. Tune into the Listening Mentor TV show, Fridays on USA Global TV, and learn how listening can be your superpower. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, MBA, DBA, 
Certified Holistic Life, Career, and Executive Coach. Certified Yoga Sculpt Teacher. Certified Meditation Teacher. The Listening Mentor. Singer Songwriter. Founder. President. Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio. DrJacqueline.com. Thank you to all our elevated listeners, team members, animal characters, and co authors. Contact us at 215 852 9406. Jacqueline at drjacqueline.com. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. My name is Roland, Roland Friedel. And maybe as you can recognize from my accent, I'm Austrian. So it's a small country in the middle of Europe, in the heart of Europe. And yeah, from I'm 59 years old. I'm a father and a grandfather. And from my business background, after my very short but very successful corporate career, I was the youngest member of board of director in a, in a, in a huge business. A huge company. I started my own businesses in different areas, in different industries, um, and I made a. I got a lot of experience. What is working? What is not working? And about two and a half decades ago, I started a training, coaching, consulting company, Spartan Performance Systems, where I did and still do train and consult international huge businesses worldwide, like Xerox and other uh, big players in the world so we do a lot of sales trainings and management trainings with my team in different languages that's my main background in business besides that i'm very engaged in men's work and also in the environment that's that's my, my background make it short like so i'm very to be honest i'm very curious about what's going on in the world I'm, I, I'm i love to learn i love to travel so my huge passion is traveling right now as you can see the background i'm sitting in my motorhome so after 14 years living on a beautiful island i decided to move into my motorhome and travel to europe and live and work from my motorhome so and i i got engaged uh to usa global tv and radio actually a year and around nine, 10 months ago, a very good friend of mine, he contacted me and asked me if he can invite me for an interview in USA Global TV and Radio. I guess the show was called The Journey of My Life. And to be honest, in the beginning, I said no, no, because uh, I had very bad experience on, on, on interviews in my business careers. I did it twice for a TV channel in Austria. And then they, they cut it and edited it. And at the end, my my comment was totally different what, what, than to the reality I said. So I said in the beginning, no, but I I trusted this guy so they said okay let's do it he told me i don't have to fly to the us i can do it from my home that was at the time this was this island in mallorca so and it was an, an amazing uh yeah and a beautiful conversation and then dr jacqueline contacted me and asked me if i'm interested in, in becoming a co-moderator of a show and so we started the, the mallorca connection which is a, a weekly show on, on monday the mallorca connection um, yeah, I got more and more involved. I become an elevated listener because I strongly believe it's important to listen first before before you talk. And I had the chance to host and moderate and design my own shows like the Earth Show in the past, the, the Man Shows. I became a talking head, an expert on, on business topics. So I, I hosted, moderated, uh, I guess about more than 100, maybe 200, I don't know if I do, uh, shows on USA Global TV Radio, and I still do. And, and finally, we started the It's Your Healthy Lifestyle, a very good show, and we bring a new one on uh, about, about the planet, planet Earth. Yeah, that's a little bit what I'm doing here on, on USA Global TV and Radio. So why I'm doing this, uh, first of all, um, I really love new medias. I love the platform. I love the, the work that this Dr. Jacklin is doing to educate people. It's all about sharing, caring, and connecting and, and networking. And the benefit I got out of this in my personal experience, I learned a lot of, about myself, to be honest. I learned a lot about my strengths in, in, in moderating, in hosting, in, in talking live on, uh, in front of a video camera. I learned a lot of my, myself, where my strengths, where my weak points that I have to improve. I met a, a new, interesting, a lot of new, interesting people. Some of them became friends of mine. Uh, yeah, actually, after all, it's a hell of work to be sure. Yes, it is to be prepared to invite people for the shows, to find new topics, to, 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 to do research on the facts. But I learned a lot about myself. 
I learned a lot about the industry, the media industry. I learned a lot about broadcasting, videos, interviewing. And as I said, I met interesting people, a lot of interesting people, and also made new friends where I'm very happy for that. So yeah, US and Global TV and Radio, it's the platform to connect. It's about sharing and caring. And for me, US and Global TV and Radio is a huge family, and I'm very thankful and grateful for this experience. And yeah, and for the, I guess the best is yet to come. Thanks a lot from Roland from Austria. Thank you, bye. I'm children's author Diane Floyd Bain, and I am co host for several of the USA Global TV and radio shows. I joined because of the purpose of the USA Global TV and radio. They provide content for the viewers and listeners, an opportunity for people around the world to have their own show or even be a guest on an existing show. We truly believe in helping others get their positive message out to the world. We also have the opportunity for the listeners, you can watch on several platforms and on YouTube, you can ask questions and even give a comment. We absolutely love it. I love being part of the USA Global TV and radio because I love positive messages and who doesn't? And we need more of that in the world. We are a family and we hope you will join us and become part of the family too. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award-winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademarked series The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand.
these wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com, Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise. Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event.